everyone, Izza here back with another video and in this video we're going to be covering a topic I get asked about a lot which is how people can get started with cosplay. These are all things I find myself often bringing up when people ask me questions about getting into cosplay and getting started with costume and prop making so I thought it would be cool to do a video where I sort of consolidate all that advice together into one place. I will also say that what drew me to cosplay and has very much crystallized into my area of focus is putting a lot of thought into design and craftsmanship and fabrication, especially when it comes to things like armor, props, sculpting and mold making. So that is what I can speak to the best. Some of these tips will still absolutely be useful for people who are more into the performance aspect of cosplay or who maybe prefer to buy or commission their costumes. But yeah, a lot of this will be focused on how to get started with things like costume and prop fabrication. So let's get to it. Tip number one is to remember that everyone starts somewhere. I know a lot of people who've said that they really would love to get into cosplay, but that they don't know where to start and that they don't feel like they could ever be as talented as the people who make the costumes that they aspire to. It's definitely easy to look at an intricately crafted gown or suit of armor and feel intimidated. Believe me, I still feel that about other people's cosplays. But I think it's very important to remember that crafting and fabrication and art in general is much more about learned skills than it is about an innate talent. As I said, everybody starts somewhere and every amazing intricate cosplay you see is the result of that cosplayer's skill built up over time. If you're interested in cosplay but have no prior sewing or crafting experience, you shouldn't burden yourself with the expectation of having the same skills and knowledge of people who have already been doing this for years. And definitely don't let that stop you from even trying it out at all. It's just not a fair expectation to put upon yourself. Because of course, the sooner you start making those costumes, the sooner you will start honing those skills for yourself and you'll be surprised how quickly you'll be making things that seemed way too intimidating before. Which leads me to tip number two. If you're not happy with something, don't be afraid to remake it. Now, I know this may be subject to things like your budget and time frame and availability of materials, but I really think that if you're not happy with the way something has turned out, you're not like honor bound to be beholden to that first attempt. Maybe you'll want to remake a whole costume a few years after you first made it. Or maybe you'll want to remake a prop or part of a costume after the first time you've worn it to a convention and have seen how it feels to wear it for an entire day. Or maybe you just made a mistake and you've realized that you need to fix it right away. Don't worry, don't panic, it's fine. We all make mistakes. Allowing yourself the grace and the ability to reapproach a build when you make mistakes will better empower you to learn from those mistakes and to improve as a craft person. I often think of the first time I wear a cosplay as a test run and then make edits based on my experiences while wearing that costume for the first time. So for example, after the first time I wore my Aloy cosplay to a convention, I remade the feathers on the bow because I had realized that I'd spent so much of the convention noticing people knocking into them because they stick out a little bit from the bow and being worried that someone would just accidentally like tear them off as they knocked into the bow and that I'd lose them. So when I got home I remade them, made them much more robust and then I was much more comfortable the next time I wore that cosplay. But I've also made some big mistakes I've had to fix right away like when I was making my Cassandra cosplay I made the helmet before I had styled the wig, which meant I forgot to take into account that the wig would end up being bulkier than my real hair. So once I tried the helmet on with the wig, uh, suddenly the helmet was just like a little bit too small for my head. After being mildly devastated because I was very happy with that helmet, I realized that I didn't need to remake the whole helmet from scratch and that I could figure out a way to patch it, essentially like perform surgery on it in a way that wouldn't be noticeable once I had repainted the helmet. So I cut a slit right up the back of this completely finished helmet and put it on over the wig and created a piece of foam to wedge in between to fill in the gap, made a new bottom section for the helmet and then fill it all of it in painted it and then once that was done no one would have been any the wiser that I'd performed like life-saving surgery on this helmet. It's probably my favorite helmet that I've made both because 
I think it looks really cool and Cassandra is one of my favorite characters to cosplay, but also because I learned a really important lesson from making it. So you see, we all make mistakes and it's totally fine to remake things when you're not happy with them and it can be a great learning experience and really help you improve your build. Moving on to tip number three, which is to do a design breakdown. This is something that I find incredibly helpful when approaching bigger, more intricate cosplays in particular. Whether it's by drawing my own sketches of the costume or drawing or making notes over a reference image, I really like to break a character design down piece by piece before I jump into making the costume. It's really useful to think about the different layers to the character design and your costume when translated into physical 3D space, how they will all fit and move on your body and how they're gonna attach together and affect one another ahead of time. Especially if this is like an armor build where the bulk of the foam could get in the way of you sitting or walking or being able to pull a pose that you really want to do. For example, for this Tomb Raider cosplay, there's the armor as the most striking feature, but then there's fur both over the top and underneath that, as well as a chain shirt and a tunic and trousers underneath that. Before diving into making the costume, I spent some time looking at the character turnarounds and thinking about how each of those pieces was going to fit together over my body. I decided that rather than making an entire chain shirt, the majority of which wouldn't be visible anyway, I would just make two skirt pieces that would be attached underneath the armor. So then I knew that I would need to leave room to accommodate both of the chainmail pieces and the fur underneath the armor in order for it to still fit me, but that I didn't need to accommodate an entire chain shirt. Knowing that it was gonna be two small pieces of chainmail also meant that I could use real metal rings to make the chain mail because it wasn't gonna to be too heavy for me to wear and it wasn't going to bulk out my entire figure. So as you can see, I also use this process to think about what materials the costume is made from in world and how I'm going to replicate that in my cosplay. So that allows me to consider what types of fabrics I'm going to have to look for and what materials I'm gonna be using for real and what I'm gonna be simulating through other materials such as foam or latex. For example, there's often a decision to be made as to whether to use real or faux leather or foam to simulate the appearance of leather. And your decision might be based upon the character design, your budget, and numerous other factors. So for my Tomb Raider cosplay, faux leather worked perfectly for all of this. I had to sew trousers, as well as make a gun holster and some belts and straps. But for my Cassandra cosplay, aside from the belts and straps, which needed to be like flexible fabric, using foam to simulate the appearance of leather actually worked a lot better for me. Because for that Cassandra cosplay, the leather armor is like the main feature of the cosplay. So I wanted to be able to have more control over the texture, the paint job, and the finish of the leather. This design breakdown process also enables you to think about how you are going to break this costume down for transport, especially with things like armor and large props. You're gonna wanna think ahead of time about how you can break them down into smaller pieces that you can then reconnect together once you get to the event. And if you want to see me going through the process of drafting a prop sword that was made to come apart for transport, then you could watch my Hades Stygian Blade build video where I do exactly that. Related to tip number three is tip number four, which is to think about how you are going to carry your stuff on you while you are wearing your cosplay. <laughs> now you might not mind carrying a bag on you that doesn't go with your cosplay, but that can really be a pain, especially if you are wearing like armor or an especially fiddly or delicate costume of some kind or if you're mainly at a convention to do photo shoots or a competition. I personally also just prefer to keep my stuff on me while I'm in cosplay rather than having to hand a bag off to someone every time someone wants a photo but also look I'm from London so I just live under the constant assumption that if I can't see my handbag it's already been stolen. So if this also matters to you then an important question to ask yourself is does the cosplay you're making have a bag as part of the cosplay and if it doesn't does it have something in the costume design that you can turn into one? You could also theme a bag to your character if they don't have one. For example, when I wear my Miss Marvel cosplay to conventions, I wear it with a gold bum bag. Yes, that's what we call them in the UK. Um, because in the comics, before she gets her final hero suit, Kamala is shown wearing her burkini and a gold bum bag strapped around her waist. So it's something that the character would wear, it suits her, and it allows me to carry some of my stuff on me while I'm on the con floor. 
Even if they don't have a bag, lots of characters will have part of their design that can be used as storage or pockets. So for example, Aloy has a bunch of pouches around her waist. So when I made those pouches, I made one the exact size of my phone. And then the other sort of larger square pouch I used as a general storage space for some small necessities like bank cards and makeup and convention passes. I could fit a surprising amount of stuff in that pouch, like I even carried snacks in there. But some designs have no pouches or pockets and you might have to get creative. So for example, for my Cassandra cosplay, that character has no visible pouches or bags or anything, but she does have a quiver on her bag. So even though I wasn't doing a version of the character where I was making a bow to go with the costume, I decided to make the quiver literally just so that I could sew a little zip pouch, glue it to the inside of the quiver and use the quiver as my bag while I was wearing the cosplay. Tip number five is don't reinvent the wheel. These days, cosplayers are blessed with a wealth of tutorials and other resources available online. So make use of it, especially when you're just starting out, the ability to see how another cosplayer or a professional fabricator of some kind has made something is so incredibly valuable. You don't need to struggle figuring out how to make something when there are usually tried and true methods that people have been using for a long time. If there's like a big armor build you want to make and you have no idea where to start, then you could literally start by just Googling character name and cosplay, seeing if somebody else has made it and taking inspiration from how they made their costume. But do remember to credit them if you like directly copy anything like a pattern or something like that. If the costume you want to make is from a live action piece of media, like a movie or a TV show, then you might be able to find like a behind the scenes documentary or video about how they made particular costumes from the movie and maybe the costume you want to make will be included in that. Or you might be able to find an art book or an article that talks about the costume and production design for that movie. There might even be a full cosplay tutorial or pattern available online for the thing that you want to make, which can be incredibly useful. You of course don't have to follow it to the letter, but it can still be useful even if you deviate from that pattern or that tutorial to see how somebody else has constructed it in that level of detail. If no one has made the build that you want to make, then I suggest looking at things that are similar enough to what you want to make. So for example, a generic armor making tutorial or a tutorial or a pattern for a dress or a suit of armor that is similar in design to what you are making. So for example, if your character design is some cool fantasy armor based on ancient Greek armor, then you could look at how another cosplayer made a different cosplay that was also inspired by ancient Greek armor and clothing. In that case, you would also be able to look at real life artifacts that those sorts of character designs would then be based on. I did this when I made my Ares cosplay. Because Ares is only shown in the game in artwork from the waist up, I had had to design basically the lower half of the cosplay. So when I was designing the Greaves, I not only looked at the rest of Ares's costume design and took inspiration from that, but I also looked at real ancient Greek armor and looked at like the shape of those Greaves. Back when I started making Transformers cosplays, I remember at the time I looked a lot to Iron Man cosplayers because that was kind of a big trend in cosplay and armor making at the time. So even though I wasn't making an Iron Man suit, I could look at Iron Man cosplayers and how they had broken down the design of the costume so that they could still move in it and what sorts of materials and tools they had used, take inspiration from that and adapt it for myself for my big chunky mech costumes. Remember to also look at resources from outside of cosplay too. In a lot of cases, there are tried and true industry methods that will also be applicable to cosplay. If you really want to learn to sew, you might be better off looking at general sewing tutorials or books or even taking sewing classes to get a really good baseline knowledge of that skill set and then applying it to cosplay. Which leads me to tip number six, modify before you make. When you are completely brand new to skills like sewing and patterning and armor and prop making, making something completely from scratch can feel pretty daunting. So a great way to get started with your crafting journey could be to modify already existing things instead of making things completely from scratch. As mentioned in tip number five, a great way to test the waters with armor and prop making could be to make use of patterns available for free or for purchase online. But you 
you don't have to only use those patterns for the things that they were intended for. You can easily modify patterns to suit your needs, which might be easier than patterning something entirely from scratch. Whether that's by finding a more generic armor pattern to add detail to or build on top of, or finding something that has like a similar enough design that you can just make some small alterations and make the thing that you need. This applies even when you're an experienced cosplayer. Like in my Ares cosplay tutorial, I mentioned that instead of making a helmet pattern from scratch, I just modified and simplified my Cassandra helmet pattern in order to make the helmet for my Ares cosplay. And of course, this completely extends to sewing as well. You could customize clothes by painting them or dyeing them or sewing or embroidering on a bit of extra detail or even completely deconstruct and reconstruct garments instead of sewing them from scratch. Having to pick apart a dress or a pair of trousers in order to modify them will help you learn how that garment was constructed, which will then help you when you come to sewing your own clothes later on. Maybe then you could build up to sewing from commercial patterns once you've gained some confidence in the basics of sewing and then later maybe you'll even be patterning your own clothes from scratch. There is a surprising amount that you can do with repurposed modified clothes especially if you're not only you know removing sleeves or sewing extra bits onto them but you're also painting them, dyeing them, adding things like studs or extra bits of material on top. This can also be a more budget-friendly approach for newer cosplayers especially if you are modifying clothes you already own or buying cheaper secondhand clothing. Eventually you will absolutely be able to sew and pattern and make things from scratch, but this is a great way to get started and start teaching yourself those skills in a way that maybe feels less intimidating and more accessible. Tip number seven is to familiarize yourself with material suppliers. If you are going to be making costumes and props regularly, then it stands to reason that you are going to be buying materials in order to make those costumes and props regularly as well. It's a really good idea to familiarize yourself not not only with shops in your local area, but also with online suppliers where you can buy all the things you need and to have options available to you. So an obvious one is to look for a fabric shop that's local to you. You can buy fabric online, but I know personally for me and for a lot of other people, we like to be able to see and touch the fabric before we know whether we want to use it. You may also be able to find shops local to you that sell wigs and products related to styling and maintaining them, which could be very useful. Another good one to look for is DIY and building supplies shops where you can buy a lot of things that are useful for prop and armor making. So for example, PVC pipe, contact adhesive, insulation foam and respirators and other PPE are the sorts of things you'd be able to buy in those shops. Shops that sell upholstery materials for furniture will sometimes also sell foam. Usually it's that big chunky spongy foam, which by the way is also very good for making puppets. But sometimes they do also sell things like plastisote or EVA foam. And of course art and craft supplies shops for things like paints and glue and paintbrushes and like googly eyes and stuff like that, as well as charity shops or thrift stores for the Americans where you can buy cheap secondhand clothing that you could modify for your cosplays. In terms of online suppliers, obviously this will depend on where in the world that you live. For those in the UK like me, I have previously sung the praises of Polyprops who sell foam and primers and just so many other materials that are great for armor and prop making and they are geared specifically towards cosplay. There's also Coscraft who again, geared specifically towards cosplay. UK based, they sell wigs and thermoplastics and a bunch of other useful things. I'm admittedly not as familiar with the equivalents in other countries, but I know that for example, there's things like SKS props in the US who sell foam and templates and things like that. And cosplayshop.be, which is based out of Belgium and caters mainly towards mainland Europe. And they again sell foam and thermoplastics and things like that. For online suppliers, again, you also don't have to only use things that are geared specifically for cosplay. For certain things, I highly recommend checking out theatrical suppliers, special effects makeup suppliers and things like that. Places like like 4D Model Shop or Guru Makeup Emporium, for example. Especially if you are ordering things like silicones and resins and other mold making materials, and if you are unfamiliar with those processes and those materials, then if you ring the contact number for that company, they will have someone who can advise you on what exactly you should buy and how you should use it safely. And speaking of safety, Tip number eight is health and safety. I do try to mention this in my build videos as much as possible without it just becoming annoying because it's really important and unfortunately sometimes gets overlooked. There are a lot of materials that are commonly used in cosplay that can actually be quite dangerous or toxic if you handle them without the proper safety equipment. If you are using a material for the first time, then research if it is in any way dangerous to use and buy the appropriate PPE, that is personal protective equipment. Packaging for these items will usually include warning labels, which 
will help you figure out how exactly it is dangerous and what kind of equipment you will use to protect yourself from that. So for example, tubs of resin will have a picture of a person on them showing like a sort of blot on the throat and chest, which shows that that is dangerous to breathe in and you know that you need to wear a respirator to use that. If you are getting into foam crafting, prop making, resin casting and that sort of thing, you are definitely going to need to buy a respirator. This is the respirator that I use when I'm working with contact adhesive, heating up PVC pipe or foam, burning into foam, working with resin, things like that. This is a 3M half mask and this is a good reliable brand. It is the type of mask I was recommended to buy when I did my theatre design course. I've seen numerous other people recommend it and it was recommended to me again when I recently started my prosthetic effects MA where we use these things all the time. These masks are used with changeable filters which is these things here. They come off like this and reattach like this. The filters I usually use on this are organic vapor filters, which protect against all the things I listed above. I like to write the date on my filter so I know when I started using it. I like to change the filters on these masks every four to six months, depending on how much I've been using the mask and what I've been using it with in that time. When I'm sanding foam, sometimes I just keep this respirator on because it's usually already on hand, but you can also use a dust mask for that specifically. I would also use a dust mask when I'm working with plaster in its powdered form. That's actually what these white things on the outside of these filters are for. The last thing I did with this was I was making a plaster mold, so I had these little white filters on here for that. When sanding foam, I'll also usually wear safety goggles like these, which are incredibly sexy, uh, because when you're sanding foam, you're not only kicking up dust that you can breathe in, but it's also kicking up dust and chunks of foam that can fly into your eyes, which is deeply unpleasant and even less sexy than these goggles. So yeah, please just remember that a lot of these tools and materials require safety equipment and keep yourself safe. It's not only about you, but also others. If you live with other people, especially children, or if you have pets that can't gauge for themselves that they are coming into contact with something dangerous like these fumes and dust and everything can affect them too so it's best to keep them out of your space when you are working with this stuff and if they absolutely have to be in there or if like your kid wants to help you make a cosplay then buy them safety equipment as well and finally tip number nine is wear comfortable shoes that fit you properly <laughs> This one sounds so obvious, but I know cosplayers. I know what we're like. I know that when you're buying stuff for a costume on a budget, you might be tempted to think like, oh yeah, these shoes don't fit properly and they're uncomfortable, but they're cheap and they're the perfect design. So I'll just buy them anyway. And I'm just here saying that of course you are welcome to do whatever you want to do, but I would highly recommend buying comfortable shoes that fit you properly. <laughs> you are going to be wearing this costume at a convention for hours at a time on your feet for most of the day doing photo shoots or competitions or just wandering around buying things. Your feet will hurt a lot. You will regret those shoes that don't fit you properly and that were already uncomfortable even from the first moment you put them on. It can also really limit you in terms of your ability to pose for photo shoots or video shoots or do skits in competitions or even just enjoying your time with your friends if all you're focused on is how much your feet hurt, how your shoes keep slipping off, or how they're biting into your skin too much. Especially if you do have to wear high heels or sandals for a cosplay, at least make sure that they fit you properly and are comfortable to wear. And if you've bought completely new shoes just for this cosplay, then I highly recommend wearing them in before you have to wear them at a convention all day. Take it from someone who made all these mistakes when she was a teenager and uh, save your feet the strife. <laughs> okay, those were my nine tips for beginner cosplayers. I know that this is a little different from my usual tutorial style content, but I hope you found it useful and enjoyed it. Tell me which of these tips you found the most helpful in the comments down below, and maybe even share some of your own if you have them. If you want to see more cosplay and crafting videos from me, then subscribe to my channel and hit that bell so you get notified when I upload new videos. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram at EvilCleverDog for cosplay and crafting updates. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.